planned it whereby if I got arrested, my mates would use this money and bail me out. I had to call my parents from the jail and tell them I need tens of thousands for a lawyer. Otherwise, I'm never going to get out. I'm, right away, they slapped serious drug offender status on me, which was 25 to life. Mm-hmm. And they had 10 plus charges carrying 100 years. The second year, they doubled my bail, doubled my charge, and I was facing 200 years. Huh. And if my parents hadn't remortgaged the house and come up with 100 grand, I'd still be in prison right now. Wow. Yeah, so, you know, when, I, when you see the hurt and pain in your fer- parents' faces, it's just, you're just disgusted with your behavior. So, do you think that when your mother visited you, visited you and you saw her in that state, was that the day that something just clicked in your head and made you realize that like, it's time to change your life? And when you see your mom crumpled over and she's come 5,000 miles, and this is the woman who raised you from being a little baby, and you've not, you've basically tricked your parents into thinking you were a straight person doing legit things. I was throwing rays, I was trading in the stock market. They came and visited me. And then you gotta tell them the truth that you've done all this stuff behind their back. And then you gotta beg them to use their life savings Mm. to get you out of this shit. You're just disgusted in yourself and it's just, I just feel blessed that they came and supported me every year and I had such strong family support. To this day, um, you know, when you're a teenager, you don't want to be seen around your parents. You're embarrassed. That's what I was like. And now I'm just so proud and I want to take them out for meals and spend time with them. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it probably made you more, even more grateful and um, realize even more how much they mean to you and how much they love you and support you, you know. And my sister as well, she's been through a lot. She had a one-year-old baby who has leukemia and she's lived in fear of her child dying at any time. And, um, you know, me and my sister are really strong together now as well. She's been through, she's, yeah. So would you say you're a completely different man today? I look back at the antics of me in my 20s and... It's so far removed from the person I've become. I'm at the point now where I'm thinking, how, did, how is this even possible? How did this even happen? Did that even happen? Did it even happen? I even asked myself. Yeah. You, you know, I watch a movie like, like American History X where they're on the prison yard. And you're thinking, I was in there. That atmosphere, I was there with these guys with the swastikas and the Hitler tattoos and the lightning bolts. And they're saying to me, get in that cell over there, we want a word with you, word. And they're telling you the rules. It's just so far away from now, just waking up, going on the lawn with baby Ziggy and doing our morning workout together and just enjoying the day. And it is, it's a mind, it's a head, it's, yeah. (laughs) So I know that you've been under fire um, a few times and under controversy and stuff like that in regards to, um, I'm not even going to go into it, to be honest, because I think you've already touched on it many times. um, But I think it was proved that that was not the case, right? What they were, the the stuff that they were trying to say you was involved in is not actually... And they said I had sex um, offence convictions in america that was one of the main things that they said about me but you didn't right <sighs> okay so about a month ago okay so just hold on to that just yeah. just because i don't really want to go into it but obviously because i'm interviewing you yeah and people are making speculations and saying things yeah i just have to make it clear so that uh people don't then start saying to me oh well, why would you interview him and he's he was accused of this and he's accused of this so i just want to make everybody know and make it clear that you that it's not true and that you didn't, in fact, do any of these things that these people allege that you did. And I think it was more of a... Anyone who's got that kind of offence in mm. America, it's KOS. As soon as they go in the system, it's over for them. My story has been published in three documentaries, Vice, National Geographic. My books were done by the legal department of Random House, one of the biggest publishers in the world. Just got another book deal with Orion. Just done another documentary that they've had to send all my legal paperwork in to verify my story with Sammy the Bull Gravano coming out soon. 
So what happened was certain people I helped in the podcast world and they tried to, they made a move against me. There was a conspiracy of them. Is that James English, Marvin Herbert? I don't want to say anything bad about these people because about a month ago I did ayahuasca. Oh, you did ayahuasca? Yes. Okay. And it was a very intense trip for me, but it made me understand and to let go of this thing called the podcast wars, which is this the thing you're describing, where they came at me with various attacks on my reputation. And, um, have you tried it, Ayahuasca? No, but you know, I've 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 um I've wanted to. I've I've thought about it a few times, but I'm not too. I don't have um a full understanding of it and I'm not sure what it is if it's something to do with the demonic realm or I'm not too sure exactly what it is so I don't really want to play with something it, that I don't it's quite different know for yet. everybody you go on an intense hallucinogenic journey and all my dead friends came to me most of the people I parted with Wild Man, Seth, Acid Joey, Cody Bates, Tucson Charlie, Big Micah, The Prophet, these are like my closest crew members in, in Arizona. They came to me as a group and talked to me and they were laughing and joking. Like I think of them one-on-one, -on -one, but to have them all a group conversation that was realer than reality was so intense for me. And while man's like, don't worry, love, I'm still protecting you from above. And they were proud of me to have a family now and have baby Ziggy and to be doing well. But the bottom line was on this hallucinogenic journey, I, something came to me that, that said, you've got to let all this go about these guys who tried to destroy your reputation. You've been holding on to it for too long. Those guys that came at me are on their own paths of suffering or whatever they're going through as people. They're trying to rise up in the world. They're just getting their hustle on and they've got their own issues to deal with. And you just got to let that ride. And in fact, you've got to give them love because harboring onto hate is just a negative energy that just results in bad things karmically. Yep. So I'm going to, for the first time now, say, this is mad. This is mad. <laughs> I'm going to just, I'm just going to say big love to James English, big love to Billy Moore, big love to Marvin Herbert. I just wish you guys all the best because we're all on that same path of trying to help people who've been in prison. It's crazy what happened. It's over. It's done with. It's in the past. All you guys have continued to grow as people and mature as people. And the other thing is, most of those guys have called me privately and apologized. Oh, that's nice. And accepted they were wrong about the things that you brought up. They accepted that what they've said is they were given bad information at the time. They jumped on it said things they shouldn't have said and they have apologized to me privately. So that's, I, I, that's, just wanna that's let, I just want to let it rest with that now. <laughs>